Hi, my name is Sarah Josephine, and I am one of your many facilitators that's going to be with you from today and throughout our two-week summer camp on the island Lesser in Denmark. I cannot begin to express how excited all of us are to get to know each one of you, um, to get to take part in this online class and to spend um, two hopefully very amazing um, weeks together. Now, we've just um, commenced this online class and um, today is gonna be a little bit different from what it'll be like the other uh, remaining three times that you have because the purpose of today is that I'm going to explain to you what YES is all about and how everything works, including the digital stuff. Because I know that's a little bit intimidating. What's the relationship between the Canopy Lab website and these Hangouts? How does it all work? Um, so we'll be spending some time on that today. So before we get um, too much into detail, I'm going to mention this a couple of times. But one of the things you'll learn is that what makes live talks very exciting is that you can ask questions. You can introduce yourself and let people know that you're there. So the first thing, even before we get um, started and I introduce myself a little bit further, it's important to learn is that there's something called a Q and A feature. So a question and answer feature. And the question and answer feature is something that you actually have to activate once you log on. So you take your hand, put it on the mouse, and put it up in the right corner of the screen. What you'll see is there's like a white square that has like small other white squares inside of it. If you click on that, you can choose the Q&A feature. It's a turquoise logo. If you press on that, all of a sudden, there's a whole new menu bar that comes up on your right side. And when that's there, you can write, hey, um, like me, my name is Sarah Josephine, and I'm tuning in from Denmark. Or you can ask specific questions. And today, it's not gonna, we're not going to spend the full hour together. And I'm not going to talk for a very, very long time. But the specific um, purpose is that you can actually ask a lot of questions you might have about everything that we'll do. OK. So let's start at the beginning. My name is Sarah Josephine. I'm one of the total team of 20 facilitators that have been planning um, every part of this two-week camp and this online class um, for a really, really long time, actually. Um, so the YES program is, is mostly sponsored by UWC in Denmark. And then we've been extremely fortunate to have some amazing supporters who have given us money, like Erasmus Plus, uh, European program, and the Agostinos Foundation, and UWC Denmark. And that's actually what's you know uh, enabled all of you to come to Denmark, and it's enabled us to buy all of your plane tickets and things like that. So in UWC Denmark, we started toying with the idea of hosting our own summer camp almost two years ago. and. Um, then last October, um, a couple of the current um, uh, facilitators that you'll actually meet, uh, such as Mia and Karen from Denmark, they um, came together with me and a bunch of other really cool volunteers from UWC Denmark and said, let's, let's write an application to the EU. Let's see if we can actually get the money to host this amazing camp. And uh, so we turned in the application in October. and. Um, it was a lot of work to fill it out, so we were extremely nervous. And we were supposed to get the results in January. And then we actually, on the day that we were supposed to get the results, we got an email from the EU, and they said, um, all the results are late, so you're gonna have to wait another month. And then we, when we found out that we got the money, we contacted all of the amazing national committees that all of you are from and said, um, please nominate some really cool, awesome, creative, funny um, students from your countries, and uh, we want to see them in Denmark, and we want them to take part in this program called YES. So um, YES is uh, a program called Young Entrepreneurs for Change, Creating a Sustainable 
future. And um, we had a lot of different ideas when we created the program. Um, we were really um, fascinated by the idea that young people can make a difference in the world, um, that young people can be successful entrepreneurs, um, that young people can launch campaigns or write poems or music or, or any other things um, that can help change their local communities. And that um, regardless of our age, we're really, really able to influence the communities that we live in. It's just about being able to realize what our strengths and weaknesses are and talking to the right people, then we can definitely change the world. So that's the mindset that we had when we, uh, when we started putting the program together. And we'll dive into the program um, a little bit more um, after I talk about the online part of the program as well. But you'll come to Denmark, you'll fly in, you're going to arrive at completely different times using different gateways, meaning that Team Norway, they're actually going to take a ferry and meet us um, the morning after most of you arrive when we change to another ferry to go to the island. And then it's different. I think Team Finland is one of the earliest teams to arrive early in the morning, and they're going to take part in a huge barbecue and sort of um, party, having fun with games in the park. And then I think the last teams to arrive, I think it's Poland and um, perhaps Czech Republic that arrive late, late, just around midnight. And then we're all going to take the bus together um, and, and drive the entire night. And then by, by morning time, we'll hook up um, with Team Norway and take the final ferry over. So, um, you're probably wondering a bit about this place that we're going to, the island that we're going to. And um, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about it. Uh, but as you perhaps have also noticed, your um, assigned readings or videos to watch for this week are about the island. So, it gives you a bit of a sense of where we'll be. The small island is located between Denmark and Sweden. Um, on the island, they pride themselves by being the place in Denmark that has the most amount of sunshine in any given year. So we have the most days with sunshine on the island we're going to, which makes me really hopeful that we'll have some awesome days. But it is Denmark. You never know what a summer is going to look like. So I'm definitely advising you to pack a lot of different stuff. Definitely bring a swim, your swimwear. If you're planning to go in the ocean, which is located just across the street from where we'll be staying, and um, and definitely also bring a coat because the evenings can be quite cold. We'll have bonfires and things like that outside. Um, so so yeah, so definitely you know pack all kinds of all kinds of stuff. So once we actually uh, get to Denmark, so the first day, like I said, the people who arrive on time to take part in all of our barbecue. Um, and shenanigans in the in the garden will do that. We'll leave for Lesser and um, and we arrive on the second day, so the twenty sixth. Um, you'll be checked into your rooms. We've divided you in rooms so that no men and women are living together, um, obviously. And we've um, created the rooms in such a way that you never live with someone from your own country. So it's been quite a puzzle. Um, but I think we finally managed to get it all to make sense. Um, once we arrive and, and there's time to check into the rooms, we'll have arranged a small scavenger hunt. And, um, and also then there'll be lunch. And I want to say, if some of you want to be able to follow the program as I comment on it, um, you can go ahead and log on to www.yes2015.dk and press schedule and there you'll actually be able to see the program as well. So on the first day we'll have an official welcome and a community agreement activity um, which is something I think is really fun because it's an activity that enables you to help create the rules that we'll have for the camp. Um, then we have dinner and um, as I can already see you guys have some pretty awesome dietary requirements. So we have everything from vegetarians, no kosher, halal, everything. And 
that's exciting because it tells us something about how diverse we are. And we'll do everything in our power to make sure that there's something that everyone can eat. But if you are an extremely picky eater, I'm an extremely picky eater, we do advise that you bring a couple of your favorite things as well, just to make sure that like, I'm going to bring some of my favorite crackers and things like that, just to make sure that, um, that there is something you can snack on between the meals as well. But this is only if you have really, really specific dietary requirements. Um, in the evening, we'll have a reflection group meeting and a facilitator meeting. So what you'll notice is that uh, sometimes all of the facilitators will kind of run off to have a meeting just to make sure we discuss everything, like is everyone doing okay? Is there too much work? Do we know that the weather tomorrow is going to be amazing so we'll cancel the morning session and go to the beach instead? It's things like that. And each of you will become a member of a reflection group, which is like your primary group uh, where you'll form some extra strong relations to the people in your group and the facilitators that you are in a group with. I'm not going to get into all of the days in this much detail because then we'll be together all night and I'm sure none of us really want to do that. Um, but I will comment on a couple of things. Uh, for example, on day three, uh, we see that uh, we have an optional morning activity. And that's somewhere where we really hope that you guys um, will help us uh, run those activities. So it's in the morning, it's totally optional, it's before breakfast. But if someone really loves yoga or acting or soccer or there's, you can play volleyball, anything like that, you can say, tomorrow I'm going to get up early and do yoga. If anyone wants to come, feel free to join. So there we're really counting on you guys coming uh, with your own activities and really sort of influencing the fun activities we're going to do uh, throughout. So we'll talk more about that uh, later on. And the other thing I'll highlight um, on this day is we're going to do country presentations. Now, what does that mean? Well, one of the reasons um, that we're also going to do this online class is that we really want you guys to say something about your countries. So throughout this online class, um, you'll see that um, in the activity hour meetings we have on Thursday, uh, the facilitators are going to help you guys make those presentations, and then you're actually going to present them as one of the first things we do when we're together. And I think it's really important. You know, I don't know everything about politics in in, um, in the Czech Republic. Um, I'm sure not everyone else does. So there's a bunch of different countries in play here, and, and it's really fun uh, if we sort of know a little bit about those countries um, when we get started. And um, a couple of other comments about the program. Um, you'll see that after the sort of initial days, we have uh, daily themes. So we after the EU day is the day where you give your presentations, we have the future of EU challenges to overcome. This is really where you get a sense of what competences your facilitators have. So they're going to be introducing you to different challenges that we face. And when we say EU, we mean the greater EU, also Norway and uh, Turkey. They're going to talk about different issues. And we hope to really capture your um, attention here. And um, the following day, we have a super fun, cool, interactive day with the theme of sustainability. And I think it's really important to stress here that our activities, they're not just going to be lectures where you sit and view someone talk for an hour and a half at a time. We're really trying to do engaging things with group activities. We're going to be inside and outside and do a bunch of different cool things. And... Um, and on that day, we're actually also going to do a field trip to something called Les Sulselt, which is the old salt works where they produce um, this very fine gourmet salt. And it's an awesome place, especially if you're interested in sustainability. I really look forward to showing that to all of you. And um, the following day, we, we start on a few days with the theme of entrepreneurship and social entrepreneurship. And, um, and we have some guest um, lecturers that are called chaos pilots. So they're doing a specific um, type of degree that focuses on entrepreneurship. And they've planned the entire day. They're volunteering their time in the middle of the summer to come 
and talk to you guys. So that's very, very exciting. And um, so on the, on the uh, 31st, we have half of the day off to explore different wildlife activities. And um, your uh, facilitator, um, Carolina, is going to get in touch with you and um, ask for your priorities in terms of which wildlife activities you would like to take part in. And we really try to take your um, requests into consideration. So we'll be spending half of the day outside doing different things like kayaking, swimming in the, on the beach, biking, uh, horseback riding, things like that. Just to also, you know, it, we're all coming in the middle of the summer and we really think we should be learning things, but at the same time, we really also prioritize um, having a lot of fun. Um, then we move into the second week on the 1st of, um, of August. I'm particularly looking forward to this day because it's the day of the annual festival. And it's one of the biggest events on the island and we're really extremely lucky to be there at the time that that's happening. And we'll be taking part in it. And I, that we won't reveal entirely how that works um, until we get together. But we're really lucky to be there. There'll be a huge, um, there's a huge cooking competition. There's chefs from all over Denmark flying in to win the annual competition. All kinds of foods and activities. And we're going to spend the entire day there and just have a lot of fun. The 2nd of August, um, we start focusing on launching your own social projects, and that's something that will make a lot more sense um, once you, we move through the program. But like I said in the beginning, we're very aware of the potential of youth to create change in their local communities. And we believe that each one of us, when we're done with the summer program, can launch some type of campaign, um, create a song, or some kind of contribution towards um, world peace or creating a better environment for us to live in and we'll that may sound a bit intimidating at first but um, yeah, we're going to make it really fun um, so you know stay tuned for more information on that and um, on the 3rd of August uh, we look uh, we look especially at activism and social change on the 4th our theme is conflict resolution where especially Karen and Kaolina have planned a lot of really, really awesome, uh, fun events for us. On the 5th, um, we have, again, Karen and Kaolina doing both diversity dialogues and doing some different moral dilemma games. Um, it's going to be a very fun and interactive day. On the 6th, we have a pitch day where we work with your social projects. And... Um, and have a pitch finals event in the evening, um, which I'm really, really looking forward to as well. And then on the 7th, so the second last day we're together, we're going to have a big bonfire, both with locals and performances. So we encourage you, in case you play any instruments, please bring your instruments or your singing voice, or um, perhaps you have a national costume and you'd like to perform a small dance, anything like that. Um, please feel free to, um, to bring any of that. And we'll have a party that evening. Um, we'll convert the dining room into a disco. And on the final day, um, we'll have a bunch of um, sort of bonding activities and reflection. And then we, um, we leave the island early in the morning and make our trip back to Copenhagen. So that's sort of the, of the program, um, if you just look at the program, um, just sort of very sort of the outline of what we'll be doing each day. And as we move through this online program, you'll get more of a sense of, of what it's all about. So I keep talking about that we have this online program, and I have been getting a bunch of emails saying, you know, what, how does it all work? Why do we have to go on this Canopy Lab website? But we still have to click on a link in order to um, get to these talks. So I'm just going to sort of explain that really from the beginning. So um, Christian, who is one of the other facilitators, and, um, and I 
um, launched Canopy Lab. So it's it's um, it's a company that we own. We launched it this January, and uh, Canopy Lab is all about um, creating a link between really exciting NGOs and cultural institutions who have something they really want to share um, with young people and then connecting them with young people through uh, online classes. But as some of you probably know, you can take a, online classes pretty much anywhere. Um, but it's our opinion that online classes today are extremely boring, especially because they're not live. You never get to see the faces of the people um, that you're in the class with. And that's really demotivating. Uh, at least I know I've taken online classes with other um, other companies before, and I never make it till the end because I've forgotten it or then I postpone it, and it's not like anyone's ever going to notice if you're there or not. Um, so Christian and I felt really strongly that we could create a different type of online education that is all about meeting people and engaging in conversation. And um, and we started this company also because we think why is it always universities that teach these kind of classes? And why is it always about learning something specific? Maybe I don't want to learn um, how to code. Maybe I'd rather talk to other people about their lives and their problems and then collaborate on solutions to specific things rather than learning, for example, how to code a Christmas card. I'd rather code in order to solve a problem that some of the people I'm talking to are having. So that's when we created Canopy Lab. And that's where you log on to get on all of the information about the classes. The structure of a week is really simple when it gets spelled out to you. So every Sunday, if you log on to canopylab.com and you click on the class that you're taking, you'll see the curriculum for the week. So each week has its own description. For us, this week now is called Yes, or everything you need to know about Yes. You log in. And you can see all of the information. On Tuesday, which is today, we have the live talks. The live talk today is different because I'm just here explaining really boring things to you about how everything works. But I promise you on the next Tuesdays, things are going to get really exciting because people are going to come and talk about different issues that they're really passionate about. So you're going to learn a bunch of stuff as well. On Thursdays, that's I'll, I'll tell you, for sure, this is the most favorite time of all of the students we've ever had. So we call it activity hour. You meet in groups of 10 people for an hour. So there'll be two facilitators and eight students. And you get to talk about a bunch of cool things that the facilitators have prepared for you. And then sometimes they give you a small assignment. Uh, we used to call it homework. But actually, your students have renamed it, and they call it fun work. It's really small assignments that usually take about 15 minutes to complete. And then upload it either to the Facebook group or on the Canopy Lab platform, depending on what you prefer once you're done with it. But your facilitators are going to talk a bunch more about this on Thursday. But that's due on Sunday. So that's really how the week works. So on Sunday, the curriculum is released. On Tuesday, we have a live talk. On Thursday, you meet with your cool friends in the activity hour. And then on Sunday, again, you submit any fun work if you have it. And then you get to see the new curriculum. But how does it work in practice? It can be a little confusing. So what I've chosen to do is to go ahead and share my screen with you guys for a couple of seconds to give you the grand tour of Canopy Lab. Hold on, and I'll just share my screen in one second. Great. So as you can see, I'm on the Canopy Lab website now. I've logged in, which is why you can see that I'm, I'm Sarah Josephine. And because I'm one of the creators, I have a, a couple of extra features that you won't see in your version. But I'm sure you know we can, we can keep that under control. Usually when I log in, I think the easiest way to do it is to I log on, I, I check the courses. So the courses are the most exciting part. So I just clicked the courses tab. And here I can see the total amount of courses there's been. I can see my courses and all of the courses that are live right now. So my courses for you guys will probably only be the yes 
young entrepreneurs for change creating a sustainable future I know that some of you are actually already taking the international um, politics class and some have signed up for other classes as well and I think that's awesome I think you guys have made really amazing contributions to of some of the classes we're running right now so right now I can see that young entrepreneurs are changed there's 60 students in the class it's run by United World Colleges and now I'm gonna click on it so for most of you guys it will say start course up here because you haven't started your class yet for me it says continue because I've already looked through some of the first modules so now we're on the yes class and you can read a general description so this is the description that's available to anyone about what yes is all about so young entrepreneurs for change is a four-week online course designed to enable the students to get to know one another before the summer camp blah 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 okay we get that but what are we gonna learn about well there's a curriculum tab down here you see here and here you can see the outline of each week this week Week one is called Welcome to Yes. The live talk on Tuesday we're having right now is called Everything You Need to Know About Yes. And Activity Hour One, which is our meeting on Thursday, we got that right there. Let's click on that and see what that's all about. Okay, on Thursday you're gonna have Activity Hour. It's a weekly meeting which lasts one hour. You'll meet in groups and carry out different weekly challenges. The first week is all about getting to know one another better and we've placed you in different groups. You can find the complete list here. Wait, if you can't remember what group you're in, you can actually see it right here. Let's click on that link. And there we are. For example, Team Dunhill, Carolina and Pia, they're the mentors and we have a bunch of students in that class. And down here, there's actually a link. You can click for your Thursday meeting. So if you're in Team Dunhill, Dunlin, sorry, of course, you can actually click on this link here and it'll take you directly to the Hangout that you're using, that we're using um, on Thursday. Great, well, that's awesome. Let's get back to the course. So here you can see everything that's gonna happen and each week the next section will be released. So for week one, I can read all the details I can go in and I can see this lecture already because it's already started. So if for some reason you missed it or there's some part of the lecture you wanna see again, wait, were we supposed to bring instruments? Yes or no, you can go back and check it out. And here you see down here are the videos that you were asked to view this week so you know something about Lesu. The, the, the land of light, which we hope is true um, when we're meeting. Great. and. You should be able to view me again now, perfect. So that's how the online class works. I know it can be a bit tricky, but I think it's really nice that you have all of the weekly activities gathered in one place. Um, and what you'll see is that we'll continue to use that platform to uh, really get to give you guys an opportunity to influence that we've specifically left some things empty in the program because we think it's gonna be exciting if you guys get to decide some of the things that we'll be learning. Um, yes, so the, I think the final thing I'll say before we start looking at where people are tuning in from is um, that Canopy Lab does host a bunch of different classes from different NGOs, a bunch from UWC, but also other NGOs, and uh, I think you should definitely check it out. They're all free. Um, and uh, you might find something there that you you could find very interesting and um, yes let's see so this is your opportunity today to ask questions again should I bring a swimsuit um, should I bring pocket money will there be time to sleep any any question that you might have um, because we're actually meeting pretty soon but let's see where people are tuning in from Great, and we actually have a question as well. So I am I'm going to try to pronounce these names. I, I apologize in advance if I don't do it correctly. You will have plenty of opportunities to correct my pronunciation once you get to Lesu. So the first is, hello, I'm Wojtek. I'm from Poland, and I'd like to ask, 
what is special in Danish lesser community that we could be able to learn from it? What are the opportunities we can expect on the course? Um, very good questions. There's definitely um, many reasons why we picked this particular location. Um, generally, in UWC, what you'll notice is that many of the schools, not all of them, um, are located in very secluded places. So by secluded, I mean places that aren't close to a city. Because we believe that you learn more if, you're, if we're close together on a small island where we don't have too many distractions. So that's one of the reasons. Another reason why we picked this specific location is it's an absolutely amazing and interesting island. Uh, it's a beautiful island with a very diverse nature and a nature that's distinctly different from anywhere else in Denmark. It's also an island that hugely suffers from some of the problems that we see in many of the European peripheries. It's suffering from brain drain, depopulation. There's um, pretty much very little young people left. Um, they're about to get their first migrant community. I'm very interested to see how they'll handle that. They have huge natural uh, resources, beautiful forest. They have water that's ideal for sports. Um, but not a lot of things are happening there. Not a lot of entrepreneurs are using the opportunities that the island has. So we're very interested to see also what kind of ideas that we can generate in this place, also about the place. What would attract more young people to this type of location? What type of sporting events could the island have? What type of food production, et cetera, et cetera. This island actually hosts Denmark's annual entrepreneurship week um, and a large um, entrepreneurship meeting. So there's a huge focus on entrepreneurship on this island that I think all of us could really, really benefit from as well. And a local community that's very entrepreneurship minded that really want to take part in a bunch of the activities that we're doing. Now, in terms of opportunities from the course, um, I'm assuming that that means, you know, what you get out of taking part in the course from a more broader context. It is a course that's fully supported and, and also sponsored by United World Colleges. And a few years ago, United World Colleges decided that any person that takes part in a UWC program becomes a UWC alumni. And uh, what does this mean? It means that once you're done and you've successfully completed the class, you will get a diploma and you can use that diploma to become a part of the UWC community in your country. You can log on to the UWC outnet and put in that you attended this specific short course and then actually that gives you the right to attend UWC events across the globe. You can, we for example, have something called Second Sunday at Six, where it's, for example, in Washington, D.C., or in London, or in Copenhagen, or in Prague. There's these events where people come or have a tea or have a beer and talk. You can go to things like that um, and take part in other events. Some of you might be applying to UWC next year. Uh, if you're doing that, this certainly, I think, will strengthen your application and your commitment towards UWC ideals. But also, it's going to be, even if you're not applying to UWC, it's a really unique opportunity to meet a really, really cool, fun, engaged students from all over the world and form some amazing connections and make friends yeah, from pretty much everywhere. So I think um, it's a pretty awesome opportunity. Great. Let's take a look at some of the other comments. We have uh, a hello greeting from Berat, who's tuning in from Turkey. Hello to you too. Then we have Ida. K, who says that she might bring her acoustic guitar. Um, does anyone else know how to play? Please answer that and please bring it. That would just be amazing. Uh, yes, and we see Johan. Hi, there's been a bit of a discussion about instruments here. Unfortunately, it would be difficult for me to bring my piano, but will there be one where we're staying? Great question. I don't think that there is no, there is no piano. But this do, does give me an opportunity to say something a little more about uh, both music and where we'll be staying. During our last week on Lesu, there is actually a uh, music week happening, a sort of culture and music festival. And uh, the island is largely made up by different types of artists that live there. 
And uh, we have been invited to attend all of the events in the evening, which is why we've also kept a bunch of the evenings free. So if anyone's interested, there'll be music, sort of jamming sessions, poetry, anything like that. And there could be someone who had a piano there. So if you feel like performing, I'm sure you'd be given the opportunity to do so. Um, I'd also like to say a little bit more about where we're staying. We're staying at uh, a bed and breakfast. Um, and um, it is actually owned by my mother-in-law. Uh, so um, it is a place I know very well. It's a very personal place to me and we'll be surrounded by family when we're there. We will also be the only guests there. So we, we have rented out the entire place. Uh, so I think we'll have an amazing space to really be ourselves and get to know one another. But obviously, I think it also carries, you know, I've, I've promised that we're very respectful and nice. And I'm sure we'll be that. Um, I'm sure we can live up to that responsibility as well. And we're, we're less than two minutes walk from the beach. Um, so it's, it's a really great place. And uh, it's a beautiful beach as well. Then we have uh, Rose or Rose, who's tuning in from Sweden. Hello to you too. And... Um, we have Tarek from Turkey, and we have Luna from Croatia, and um, Ida from Croatia, Melina from Finland, and we have Deborah um, from Czech Republic, who says it's nice to meet all of you. And, uh, and this is a bit of a sort of artificial way to meet one another. But remember, when we see each other on Thursday, you will actually be able to see each other just like you can see me now. We'll all be in the conversation together. So that's even more interactive. And um, Meriton asks, can I bring a football? You could. I don't think it's necessary. I'm quite sure there'll be some there. Um, just so you don't have to fill your entire suitcase. Um, I will guarantee that there is a football. And then we have, uh, hello everyone, I am Selin and I'm writing from Turkey. Hello. Um, again, this is sort of your final chance to ask if you have any specific questions. Of course, you can always ask on the Facebook page. And we're also working on a welcome pack package that will contain a packing list and things like that. Um, so so th this isn't the last, last chance, but if you want a sort of a live answer from me, um, this is your last chance to ask questions. Hello to Pedro from Spain. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there's a lot of countries here. In, in total, will be 10 different countries. And it's nice to see that there's uh, people from all the countries. We have Reka from Hungary. And Justina from Poland. And Teresa from Czech Republic. Esther from Hungary. And then we have a greeting from Sarah from Denmark. So we'll be two Sarahs from Denmark. I'm sure we'll work it out somehow. Benz from Hungary. Raul from Spain is tuning in as well. And um, another greeting from Mirton from Norway. Then we have, hi guys, I'm Pinya from Finland and very much looking forward to see all of you. I'm very much looking forward to see all of you as well. Um, and Ida has been uh, very active, so she said, just some information, I checked the weather for Lesu, and apparently the average temperature on the island during the summer is between uh, 18 and 20 degrees Celsius. And um, I think that's probably average night and day, because I recall all of my summers being quite a lot hotter than that. Um, so, yes. But thank you for that. And please do all the fact checking and, and uh, fact information sharing um, as possible. That's awesome. So we have another question from Wojtek, which I'm sure you will help correct when we meet each other. How does reflection group look like? Is it similar to an umbrella group? Exactly, it's very similar to that. You'll meet um, every other evening for an hour and you'll do activities in the group and have snacks and get to know one, each other, one another, share music. It's like, yeah, having an umbrella group, having a place where you really belong, where you can share all of your ideas, or even if you're feeling homesick or anything like that, you can share that with the group. Um, 
So we have um, a question from Margarita from Spain, and she says, Hi, I'm Margarita from Spain. You just said we'll be two minutes away from the beach. Will we go there then? Shall we bring a swimsuit? Uh, if you want to go to the beach, yes, we will definitely go to the beach. There's both space sometimes during the day, but we've also tried to make, I don't know if some of you are familiar with some of the other short courses that take place all around the world. I think that we've made a program where there isn't too much uh, just teaching. I think we will be doing quite a lot of, of fun activities outside. So we definitely will be going to the beach. I think we need to figure out some kind of safe way of doing it because, um, I mean, the tides and the current out there, I mean, normally the water, it, it, you have to go really far out for the water to be high. But some people have been swept out by the currents. And uh, we did see some tragedies a few years ago. So we definitely will need to see a swim test from everyone um, that you can swim. And then there will definitely be no going to the beach alone and no going to the beach in the evening. Uh, when it's dark because it's just not safe and we see tourists every year that um, have accidents so we just have to really help protect each other as well but i don't want to scare all of you it's a it's a beautiful beach and we're going to go to the beach and we're going to have a lot of fun yes um and we have <clears throat> sorry my voice is um, getting a little difficult to understand so hey guys i'm mixa from hungary you can call me Mixa or Max. As I see it, we will have a lot of opportunities to talk and get to know the locals. Is it common that the locals speak English? I'm really looking forward to see all of you. Probably not. Um, and yes, I think pretty much all the locals will probably understand you, but they might also be a little bit shy. They're used to having a bunch of tourists from Sweden and Norway. So while I think, you know, it's not going to be a problem, um, but because there's such a big portion of people, so there's 15, or if you include, include the mentors, even more, but there's 15 students from Denmark, Norway, and Sweden, you'll probably always be around someone who can communicate with the locals if they pretend they don't speak English. And um, in terms of the facilitator team, 11 of us are from uh, Denmark and Sweden. Um, so there is a vast majority of Scandinavians that will be able to help. But I, I, I mean, in the places that we're going, what we have arranged, um, for example, when we go to the salt works, I mean, they know that they have to speak English. So, so that definitely won't be a problem. But we'll think of some buddy systems, particularly also for the lobster festival. And we have Raul also has a similar question about, how, I'd like to know how will be our relations with the locals. We're really trying to invite the locals to participate in some of our events, and we're really trying to see a lot of the, of the places uh, on the island. So we've definitely invited people in. As I mentioned earlier, the island will take in refugees for the first time ever uh, in the coming months. If that ends up happening before, and if the, the refugees are interested in meeting with us, We'll also invite them to come and speak at a panel one evening and tell us about their migrant experience and <coughs> sorry, and what it's been like for them to, to come to Denmark. So we'll try to have as much interactions um, as possible. Luna wants to know if we'll have some free time. Yes, I think actually there's quite a lot of free time. Generally, we try to have free time every evening after dinner, and we eat early dinner. Typically, Scandinavian, we eat around 6 p.m. A couple of times, you'll probably have a reflection group, but there's a lot of free space in the evening. And then we have some free space a couple of times during the day, and then we have some fun activities where it isn't like we're learning, but again, we're out, we're biking or horseback riding, or we're attending a, 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 the lobster festival for a whole day. So I think there's quite a lot of free time um, where you can um, do whatever it is you, you, um, you want to do. And again, we'll figure out how that works in terms of security. We obviously need you guys to come back in the evenings and we need to know where you are. But I'm sure you know we're all adults and then we view you guys as adults as well and I'm sure we'll be able to figure that out. Next question from Deborah. How many people are going to attend the camp, in camp, including the facilitators? Great question. There's 50 
So five zero students from 10 different countries, five from each country, and then we're 20 facilitators. It's a big amount. Um, I think more than you'll see at most camps, but our philosophy is that everyone should have fun and it shouldn't be too much work. And that's why we're also a lot of adults so that we can have fun while we're there as well and not have to worry about you guys all the time. So there'll be plenty of eyes. And in terms of our age, it's really different. I think perhaps Melde is the youngest facilitator. And I think he is 18 or 19, if I'm not mistaken. And then the oldest facilitators um, will be around my age, between 29 and 33, 34, 35. Um, so quite a, a big um, age gap here. And then we have uh, Esther, really funny question. Is the lobster delicious? It is delicious. It is actually the biggest export um, item they have on Lesser. It goes through all of Europe. We are currently negotiating with the uh, uh, fishing industry to see if, um, if they will donate some lobster to us, um, both for the lobster festival that we can do something with, but also so you guys can try. This is obviously one of the things that is so expensive that we can't just buy kilos of kilos of lobsters for you guys, but we're hoping that they'll donate um, some lobster for us to both learn how to work with and also learn how to eat. And uh, we have Thomas from Finland who sends his greetings as well. And then we have Nina who encourages Luna to bring her instrument and all of the others as well. All talents are welcome. Nina, I suspect you also have some talents, so we'll look forward to see them as well. And um, yes, Luna asks, is there anything? Ah, Luna says, is there anybody else who wants to bring their instrument? I play sax and I really, really want to know, is there someone who also wants to bring a guitar or a violin or any other instrument? Awesome idea. Cool. I'm sure there'll be, again, there's 70 of us in total. I'm sure there'll be people who play instruments. And um, Okay, so Melina wants to know, do the Danish people understand Swedish and is German, a com German commonly spoken in Denmark? Yes, I will say Danish people understand Swedish and Norwegian and the other way around. So the three countries can understand each other, but then again, not always. Um, I'm always told by people from Sweden, uh, especially that they have difficulty understanding me because my accent is not from Copenhagen. Um, so, so it's not just like necessarily the easiest conversation, but you could understand each other in principle. Then is German a commonly spoken language in Denmark? Certainly among the older generations. And I think probably on the island also because they're used to tourists. So they definitely speak German, many of them. And, and certainly there's lots of Norwegian tourists that come by boat. Um, I think probably most of the, at least in my generation as well, you had to learn German in school. Uh, I'm not sure how good people are at German anymore, but but um, but they should be able to understand German. So we have Johan who says, maybe seems like a boring question, but I find it interesting. What is the political situation in Denmark in regards to less immigrant friendly parties? Um, okay, let me. What is the political situation in Denmark in regards to less immigrant? -friendly? Okay, so. Will definitely. It's really. I'm really happy you mentioned this because the Danish students will do a, a, a talk that sort of uh, places the Danish co context as well. Um, so I, when I am not doing this, uh, I'm doing a PhD in migration uh, and social media, and this is a, a topic that interests me very well. I think in Denmark, um, what we have seen, much like in in almost the rest of Europe, is a political shift and um, a growth in the parties that you would call um, a populist party. So we have the Danish People's Party in Denmark, which looks like it could be the second largest uh, party in Denmark after this coming election. Um, I also think we've seen a shift in the uh, social democrats and um, the, the socialist parties where the policies towards migrants aren't as open. It's quite restricted in terms of what the policies have changed in the last 70 years. 
I'm not going to dive too much into this because I fear I'm going to start a whole lecture just on this. But we're definitely going to introduce the political scene in Denmark, the political situation, and, and generally also what are some of the challenges that we face in Denmark later on. Uh, but brilliant question, and I'm going to make a note of that. Great. Um, Luna wants to know, when we arrive in Lesu, are we going to be split into groups like the ones in which we are on Thursdays, or are the classes and activities made for, to be attended altogether? The groups we have for the online classes are just for the online classes. So your reflection groups will be different groups again. And um, the activities we do on the island are, in principle, all together. But a bunch of times, someone will talk for you know, 20 minutes and then divide you into small groups, and then you'll do you'll either battle each other in games or do work together and present it. So it's a very hybrid. And it'll be new groups every day. So we'll constantly change things up. But we usually start the day together and end the day together. We have a greeting from Natalia from Spain, who is also watching. And Luna wants to know, what if we miss one of the online meetings? I hope I won't miss some important information. Of course, um, especially as we, as we see the coming weeks, we're moving into the holiday season. And we totally understand that some of you may have booked the holidays or you have exams and things like that. So the way it works is um, if you miss today, Tuesday, it's not a huge deal. Of course, like you see, I'm giving a completely different talk because you're here and you're asking questions. So it is important that you're there. But if you miss it, you can just log into Canopy Lab and view it later, like I just showed you guys. Thursday, is, it means more if you miss Thursday. Because um, we're talking face to face via, via Google Hangouts. So we really feel if someone's not there. So in terms of the, the um, diplomas, you get one diploma for attending the UWC camp, so like the physical summer camp. And, and everyone will obviously get that because we expect everyone to show up. But in terms of the online class, you get a diploma from Canopy Lab if you make it to at least four out of the five Thursday sessions. And you do all of your fun work. So if you miss um, more than one, you don't get that diploma. Um, so that's up to you if that's something that's important to you. I know the other students we have, for them it's really important. And sometimes having get, gotten a specific diploma enables you to take another class later on that you wouldn't otherwise be able to take. Um, each week your facilitators will take attendance and send that attendance to me. And, um, and that's pretty much how it works. So if, if for some reason you can't make it, so you know like next Thursday I can't come, it's a good idea to let your facilitator know. So just don't email me because I'm not the one that sort of records your attendance anyway. So it's important that you just uh, email the facilitator. And then again, we are quite lenient as well. So for example, if you know like I'm not gonna be somewhere with internet two weeks in a row, send an email to your facilitator. You may still, we may still be able to figure out some kind of assignment you can do so you can still get the diploma. Um, so Celine has a question. Sorry, my voice, we had a talk with our international politics class just before this, so my voice is getting worn out a little bit. Celine says, there are a lot of typical houses on the island. Are we going to stay in a place like this or are we staying in a different place? You're right, there, there are some traditional houses. There's not as many anymore, and, but, there, but different foundations are making an effort on the island to create um, more of the traditional houses. We're not staying in a traditional house because we're 70 people. Um, so we, we're actually staying at the largest place and the only place on the island that's big enough to accommodate all of us. So it isn't uh, one of the traditional houses. Christian, who was one of your facilitators, says, I have a couple of guitars. I might bring one of them, but it's not the world's best acoustic guitar. That sounds like a really cool offer. Um, I'm sure we'll manage that it isn't the world's coolest acoustic guitar. Thank you for that, Christian. We've got a greeting from Victoria from Poland and Onerva from Finland. You'll have to also correct me if I'm not pronouncing it correctly. And we have, hi, I am Prokop from Czech Republic, but I'm not sure I want to bring my, my double bass. 
that's okay. And um, and Ida says, I believe we're all going with Norwegian, Pedro. So I guess instruments are a no go. You probably have to pay extra if you want to bring an instrument. That's that's true. Um, Melina says, should I bring my national costume for my country presentation? Yes, that would be so cool. I really would love to see that. I'm sure everyone else would as well. Um, okay, so we have got a couple of comments to each other. I'm just trying to scroll through. Um, so we have Melde says hello. He's tuning in from Denmark. He's one of your facilitators. And we also have uh, Nina, one of the facilitators, joining from Denmark. We have Julian from Denmark. It's like the Danish cult just rolled in all at once. Welcome to you as well, Julian. And um, then we have, hi there. Hi, here's Seng. You'll have to correct me as well, from Hungary. And... Um, Yes, and Christian answered um, that unfortunately there will not be a piano uh, at our disposal on the island. And, and uh, I think the rest is um, conversations about the airfare. So I'll go ahead and, um, and uh, scroll through those. So um, this is your final opportunity. We've got two minutes left. And what you'll see is we really try to keep time because everyone's busy. Um, okay, we got a couple of questions here. Um, okay, Justina says, how much pocket money should we take? That's cool, groups will be mixed. Are we going to spend more time outside or inside? Okay, so um, in terms of pocket money, we recommend that you bring around 75 euros. It really depends on sort of what you want. I mean, you're going to get meals provided every day um, and things like that. So, so it's more if you want to bring a souvenir or something like that home for your parents, boyfriend, girlfriend, best friend, uh, grandparents, anything like that. So to buy small momentums. I mean, there are shops, clothing shops and things like that. It's not a lot um, on the island as well. It's famous for salt. So if I were to bring home a souvenir, I'd probably bring home some of their delicious salt. Um, and are we spending more time inside or outside? Completes entire, it depends entirely on the weather. Um, when I was at a short course in Turkey, we were outside a lot, a lot. So perhaps we would introduce an exercise inside and then go outside. But again, it really depends on, on what the weather what the weather looks like. Um, if it's nice, we'll try to be outside as much as possible. If not, then we'll have to be inside. Great, well, wow, the first thing I said is that we were not gonna actually use the entire hour, and we did. I wanna thank all of you for tuning in and for an asking uh, great questions and introducing yourself. I think uh, these four weeks will serve as an amazing appetizer that will just get us even more excited about meeting each other. Now, your next activity is on Thursday, where you're meeting in groups. I hope you'll have an absolutely amazing time, and uh, I look forward to seeing all of you. Now, feel free to ask any questions you may still have or that'll pop up in your mind um, maybe a few hours from now or a few days from now on the Facebook group, or shoot me an email if it has a sort of personal nature. And uh, have an awesome evening. Thank you for tuning in. Bye.